Wow. I believe God lives underwater. I'm glad you can understand Fred over that music. I know. And, and, you know I don't know. For some reason, his voice doesn't carry over music. This is a really bad mic. Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, why don't we replace? If you know that, why don't you tell me and I'll have it replaced? We all have the same crappy mic. I know. It's awful. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to talk to Tom. I'm sure he'll listen to me. Because sometimes you can't hear Robin, too. But Tom lies to me. Yesterday I was on the phone with my agent for an hour and a half screaming that I don't want to work here anymore because Tom lies to me. He lies? Yeah. Tom considers himself a very honorable man. He's not. He's not an honorable man. Hmm. He's dishonorable. I'm shocked to know this. What does he lie about? Well, I, you know, I don't have a lot of time these days for discussion. And I, when I take time out to have a discussion with Tom about something, that it, it's got to either happen or not. You just got to give me a straight answer. If it's not going to happen, let me know and I'll deal with it. Don't jerk you around. Yeah. So, um, Tom and I had a long discussion about it a month and a half ago about the telephone system, the tele system that yeah. I've been after to get. We have the equipment, evidently. He ordered it. And the decision was made to put it in when we moved studios. So I went to Tom and I said, hey, Tom, why would you, if you got the phone system, put it in here. No, how, how complicated could it be? Put it in. I need it now. Why, why should we you wait? Why the equipment and let it sit in a box? He says to me, well, Richie, the engineer says you have to, uh, you know, he wants to be able to put it in place at the new studio. When they, I go, Tom, I built stuff in my house. You hire an architect. He measures the equipment. But, yeah, I'm telling you why you're a liar. You measure. I say, Tom. You measure the equipment. We had this whole discussion. I know your. No. I know your answer. Your answer is going to be, we never had this discussion. No, no, we did have this discussion. I said, so you measure the equipment and you leave a hole for it, and then when we bring it over, you'll be able to install it in a new place. So Tom says to me, okay, we'll get the phone system. This is like a month and a half ago. We'll right. get the. We're going to put it and, in. And we'll put and. it in here. We'll put it in here. Well, let me finish the story. Oh yeah, but you, you'll get your chance. But you're, you're going to... Pinocchio. Go to, no, it's going to go to a conclusion that's your not Your nose true. is growing. So yeah, the uh, growing. so anyway, you don't know what my conclusion is. Well, no, if your conclusion is that I'm a liar, then it's an incorrect yes. conclusion. You are a liar. I know, that's I'm the worst thing you can say conclusion. to Tom. I, I'm not, I, I, I've lost all respect for you. You, so, can, um, you can call him stupid, you can call him... The thing he doesn't like is liar. I know. Well, I don't care. I, now he's a liar. I know. He doesn't mind if you call him stupid. He's a liar that he doesn't like. <laughs> but, you know. Now, listen. So I said to Tom... Is that voice All right, fine. <laughs> he, sa I sa he says, I'll put the system in for you here, and then when we move, we'll do it. Okay, fine, agreed. So, you know, it has been a while, and I kept saying to myself, gee, I wonder where, where this system... system... But I guess they're putting it in. So last night, my agent says to me something about, uh, you know, you're getting that... Something about... Uh, you, you Two don't... different things. I was I'm talking sorry. about the 1-800 number. Mixing metaphors. What is it? You, you, they were talking about the 1-800 number, because yeah. I'm on fire right. about that. Uh, and then... Uh, he said, he said, you don't need number. the 800 number until you move to the new studio because it, Tom's not putting the tele no. system in until now. No. So I said, what? <laughs> what do you mean he's not putting the tele system in? No. He goes, no, he's not putting it in until so September when you move. That's not what I told him. Oh, really? Oh, so you are putting it in here? Yes. Oh, you are? All right, you're not a liar. I'm a man of your word. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The 800 number goes in at the new place. Oh, it's, my agent got it wrong. The tele system. That's the problem when you have a third party. It's supposed about. to be put in here. Richie's just waiting for oh. the final pieces, okay. the final parts to come in. Well, you're an honorable man. I take it back. You're not a liar. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? I got bad information. <laughs> and I had a horrible night as a result. Well, you should have called me. I can't. I don't I want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> He's too angry to talk to I, you. I said, I'm not dealing with Tom anymore. Now my agent will deal with Tom. Great. From now on, talk and to now, my agent. And now I'll have misinformation. Who cares? It's better than talking to now you. Now you're playing That's right. telephone. I know. That's unbelievable. Okay. But, uh, all right, then I okay. apologize. Okay. That is my fault, and then Tom is an honorable man. He's still stupid, but he's not only... Oh, no, no, and you're smart, too. Just like the captain. Go ahead. Thank you. Tom, your office is to the right. All right. All right, well, I'm embarrassed now. I was given bad information by my agent. Uh. <laughs> and I said to my agent, this is so stupid. I said, do you think this is going to matter in 100 years? I don't even think it matters now. Uh. I said, but in my stupid little world, it matters. It would be nice, man. All right, yeah. Well, evidently, Tom has that in the works. I, I apologize to all concerned. All right? There's an apology. He'll get it in a week before we leave. Well, at least he's doing it, though. He's a man of his word. My agent made it seem like he wasn't a man of his word. Okay. Doug, you're on the air. I want to get into a whole discussion about uh, Lotus Notes, but uh, yesterday I'm sitting at the movie and uh, I'm reading notes from Baba Booey. Yeah. <laughs> and then he writes me stuff about Tom and I get totally crazy. Oh. That's why I was running around screaming about Tom at the movie. Yeah, I wondered how you could have been that incensed oh. with Tom that late at night. All I know is I was trying to get through the day, and then uh, I read about Tom, my general manager, and all his cockamamie theories about 
radio. <laughs> and evidently now he can't get a hold of me to give him, so he gives them to Gary. Oh. I think it's his new tactic. He can't, he can't, t he can't tell these cockamamie theories to me directly because I'll laugh and I'll just go, "You're insane. You're clearly insane." So he tells Gary, like Gary can do something about it. <laughs> We're switching over to a one eight hundred phone number on the yeah. show. Soon we'll be giving that out because I'm just sick and tired of trying to track everybody down. I have one central one eight hundred number. Right. So I got this really cool one eight hundred number that's real funny. It's typical of my kind of humor. And Tom saying he doesn't want it. Uh, we can't do it. And I'm like, why? Why, why not? What, what, now you're involved in my show? It's just a bunch of numbers. Yeah. Well, no, it spells out something funny. So it's still a bunch yeah, of numbers. Right. So it spells something. And it has nothing. It's not obscene or anything. And it's like, uh, well, what, 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 when did you become the arbiter of, of good taste on my show? He is such a lame dick. We don't have any good taste on this. Show. Yeah, I mean, all of a sudden, when Tom, you know, when Tom, whenever Tom gets involved in something, man, it, it's the end of my career. So, you know, I get these messages, and I'm like, well, Gary's got to tell me. I told him he's got to tell me, of course. <laughs> and he's got to tell me. And then you scream at him. Yeah, well, no, I didn't scream at Gary. I just, you know, Gary even said, hey, I, I didn't, I didn't know how to break it to you. I said, look, you got to break it to me. You got it. It's, I would. It was a man of Gary. That didn't yell no, at you. No, no, no. I got to tell you, that, that's why I love Lotus Notes. Because you don't have to tell me stuff directly. I don't tell you to your face anymore. Right. And you don't have to hear my tirade exactly. about Tom. <laughs> I'm sitting there on the movie set going, I'm screaming about Tom. Yeah, I just happened to mention that yeah. there was somebody who looked like Tom, and he went off. I was like, ooh. I started yelling at Robin. I said, don't mention Tom. Because I had just forgotten about Tom. She said, there's a guy out there looks like Tom. I go, then fire him. I want him fired. I don't even want him in my, my movie looking like Tom. Now, how was I to know that was a bad thing to say? <laughs> it was like the Three Stooges. Slowly I turned. Niagara Falls. I, was, I went eight. Because Tom is stupid. And, no, and everyone knows it, but no one wants to say anything. And the funniest thing to me is that, you know, like you're sitting there hooked up. Mm. We're on the set. Everybody can hear you having this. Oh, and, I, and, and Robert even said to me, and, and thank you, said, hey, this whole sound stage, everyone through the whole sound stage can hear your tirade about Tom. And I go, good. Maybe they'll contact him and get through to him. I have nothing to hide. <laughs> Tom's stupidity That's amazes all. me and should amaze everybody. That's how bad it is. Yeah. <laughs> I want to share Tom's stupidity with the world. <laughs> it was funny. It looked like Gary. He really is dumb. Tips, yeah. Know. He's whispering in your ear, and you just see your face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I got a hold of Gary, and I was like, Gary, this kid, this message you just sent me can't be for real. I mean, Tom cannot be for real. Because no, I thought Tom was dumb, but this is beyond dumb. <laughs> what does he have to do with this decision? He doesn't like our one eight hundred number. Pretend it's ours and not yours. Right. Pretend you have nothing to do with it. Is there such a thing as st stupid squared? <laughs> so like, I, I took math. I forget what year we started getting into the square power. The square roots. The square yeah. square roots. I remember you could square stuff. Yeah. Ninth grade, Ninth grade was it? My, my, for me, it might have been eleventh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I first started understanding it. Uh, oh man. Now you're getting dick. the concept real good. Yeah, I mean, Tom getting involved in our 1-800 number. Whenever you have to do something, we have to purchase something through the station. It becomes a whole... You see, that's why I can no longer be involved with small-minded people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like picking on Tom, but he just does stuff to tick me off. What does he have to do with any of this? He somehow got involved in my life. Somehow. Tom, how did you get involved in my life? Isn't there any, you know, I don't know that the rest of the station is doing all that well. The Tom should have all this input. If, if he'd have some credibility with me, if he'd get if the rest of the working, station working. Uh, working on a Cracker Jack station. Yeah, if, if this was a guy running a Cracker Jack operation, as you say, I would be sitting there at his feet. Yeah. I'd, say, I'd love to learn from somebody. But that never seems to stop people from having suggestions. Yeah, doesn't he realize that all of his suggestions are losers? That if I listened to him, I'd be a loser just like him? He doesn't know he's a loser. Somebody gave him, you know, that position of general manager. He thinks he's the man. Yeah, he thinks he has to say something. It's amazing. <laughs> and who's around? There's nothing else going on. What else, what else is there to manage? Do you know the captain of the Titanic thought he was a good captain? Yeah. Do you know that? And was shouting orders as they yeah, went down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and I know it's some, sh some schmuck finally said, why am I listening to this guy? He just cracked us into an iceberg. I'm about to die. Me saying uh, children and women first, and this guy just climbed over the children and women and got on the boat and went home. He was a smart one. You're damn right. But like the captain of the Titanic, Tom, our general manager, thinks he knows something. He really thinks he knows something. And yet he has demonstrated nothing in the area of knowing anything, and yet he would come in here, but he's too embarrassed, 
He would come in here and tell you he knows something. <laughs> he would tell you he's bright. But he has yet to distinguish himself. I mean, yes, he makes a good living. Yes, they have him here. I have a theory why they have him here. Because he's easily controllable. Tom, my theory why they have you here is... Yeah, you have to come in. You should come in. You really should come in and defend yourself. I'm even feeling bad for you. He's starting to speak for yes. you. You are like the captain of the Titanic. Voice in my head. There, you have never... That really, you are so far you've never really won. Off base. That is absolutely. I mean, no offense. The true. whole rest of the not station true. is not on a roll, and you. I mean, it's, it's going to be there. I mean, the new sound and everything is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. I listen to the station twenty four hours a day. This station against. Well, we're among the the top ten billers. Huh. So you're a good salesman, country. I guess. Right. Top five, actually, probably. We're one of the top five billing stations in the country. They, and and by the way, that among is no the small feat. Profitable. But when it comes to matters of and programming, I, I, I think that I think that's part of the. Uh, no offense, you know, but what do you have to do with that? report uh, cards? What do I, I have a lot to do with, with what? The sales of the station? Yeah. You don't think that's really Bucky and uh, sure. and Ed Moyer? Absolutely. And but the, am I am I involved? In the product they have to sell, not you know, I don't think you're really involved in the day to day sales. No offense. Um, no, no. I mean, a monkey could sell this station. You know that. <laughs> okay, you know that. I mean, no, no offense. Right, right, right. I mean, I don't mean to belittle right, your right. contribution, no, but you're right. You're right. But you really don't have much to do with the sales <laughs> of the right. station. Ed Moyer is the guy going out there and schmoozing, getting drunk with everyone, <laughs> getting so high they don't know what they're buying. Yeah, they'll sign anything. <laughs> He'll sign anything. And uh, Bucky, who is phenomenal, one of the <laughs> one of the top sales guys in the country. I mean, just Ed Bucky and Ed Moyer are fantastic, and our whole right. sales team. Frank Flores, so Frank Flores, Frank Flores, absolutely fantastic team of people, absolutely. I, so I don't really give you the credit for selling the station. No <laughs> I offense. Didn't, I, didn't I mean, expect you to. No, I don't. Now, and as far I as don't want it all. And as far as programming goes, I've yet to see you come up with an idea yet that made sense. So what I'm saying is, I'm how can I take you, run. when it comes to a 1-800 phone number, why would you even include yourself in the thought process? Uh, because I, <clears throat> like you said, it, it costs money, therefore I have to approve right, it. Let me ask you something. And, right. Let me ask you something. It's a dumb number. No, it, that's right. It is dumb. Everything no, on this show is dumb. With it? Tom, everything dumb just everything on this show is dumb. It's a stupid show. It's a stupid yeah. show. It's a stupid what, what, funny show. It's very hard for me to hear this voice. Here? Yeah, I know. I know. It, it, there's nothing intellectual. <laughs> this is not the McNeil Era report. <laughs> it is a stupid number. I got it. Yeah. I hate having to keep explaining that, that to you. That voice only in one channel. Yeah, I mean, amazing. Tom is amazing. He goes, well, the, the 1 800 number is offensive. I go, yes. <laughs> that's right. It is offensive, but it's not, it's not over the line. <laughs> So it's really a matter of Tom's taste yes. and Tom's sensibility. And, and he decided that it shouldn't be for what reason? He thinks that people will be turned off to it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what is it? Did you read? Well, yeah, advertising. Okay. Everyone else. But right. if I say that word at least 50 times a week and advertisers aren't turned off. The only thing you're turned on by is audience size. Right. And I'm saying that that 1-800 number isn't fitting with the rest of the show. It's fitting the whole mold of the show. And I'm saying there may be other numbers. Of course there are. Of course there's other 1-800 numbers. There's tons of them. Did he give but they're you the boring. numbers? Did Tom give me a, a, yeah. additional numbers? Yeah. No. no, no. Tom has not come up with one number. You'd love that list if I get. Yeah, I know. I mean, right. oh, come on, give us a list. You know, it'll be it'll be like you know, good guys or something. You know what I mean? Nice happy people, people, happy people. I mean, it's unbelievable. Oh, Tom's upset with some of the equipment. <laughs> it won't change a thing. Uh, now I get the voice in stereo. <laughs> it'll be like you know, buy commercials. Yeah. You know what I mean? It'll be, it's be yeah, right. Yeah, but something okay. like that. Yeah. One eight hundred shop here. Right. It'll be something like that. And the point is that. That's not Where exactly my. Time? That's you're yeah, right. That's not my sensibility. We're talking about my sensibility. Right. I realize it's not yours. Exactly. Right. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Do you know the captain of the Titanic? Thought he was a good. He thought that he was a good captain. Was a good captain. Yeah, and he did. He drove him into an iceberg. Oh. That's right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was the best captain there is. The guy probably still thinks he's the best captain there I'm was. I'm telling you, he was shouting, "We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're yeah. Yeah. going down!" Every time. He probably said, "You know, I made one mistake, and everyone's putting me down." <laughs> On the way down, he was practicing his golf. <laughs> right. He was a big golfer. Did you know that the captain of the Titanic? <laughs> while while the Titanic burned, he golfed. <laughs> 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 All right, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, you're very sorry. <laughs> so you really are against this 1-800 number and will not approve it? Yeah. <laughs> well, forget the whole thing then. I'll stick with what I got. What? You're insane. Oh. You're insane. You're clearly, you have clearly gone insane. 
You've gone insane. The show is outrageous. It's a dumb show. Absolutely. Who did you employ here? <laughs> I'm looking around the room. Right, exactly. Right. I mean, I, I mean, it's I, the best. I, it, it is. It's the best. It's it's the, the best. No argument. It's the best show. Why is it the best Absolutely. show? Is it because of you? No. Do you take any credit for the show Absolutely being the best? Not. All right. Then why would you get involved in the decision of what the one eight hundred number should be? Because don't you know that you have no idea what's good for the show? Oh, I think I have some idea. No, some. Not yeah. all. Not all. Oh, absolutely not, not all. You don't. Ha you have some idea what's good for the show? Yeah. That's insane that you even think that. You are like the captain of that. You have no idea <laughs> what's good for the show. I'll, I'll leave. I'll go start if you were a great general, iceberg, if you were a great general okay? manager, I'm an iceberg. No, no, no. If you were a great general yeah. manager, you yeah. would say the following: I have no clue. What, what Howard does. I, I don't even know. I listen to it. I laugh at some of the stuff. Oh, I, I don't laugh at some of the stuff. I have no clue. But he must know what he's doing. And Howard must know what he's doing at this point. I mean, the guy has proved it to me Why for 10 years. Why would I second guess him? Why would I second guess him? Why? Why would I second Yes, the 1-800 number is an outrageous number. It is an outrageous number. It's outrageous. It's not over the line. It's not like uh, the no, F word no, or the no. S word. It's, it's, it's a catchy word that people will go, oh, ho, ho, ho. I remember that number. Yeah, right. In fact, I can't even forget the number. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like the number. It is not a offensive number by, uh, let's say, FCC standard or some other standard that you no. might set up. Right. It's an outrageous sort of thought. It's not dirty. It's not. But it makes you think, oh, what kind of number is this? It's what well, you <clears throat> wouldn't forget it. Right. That was my goal. Uh. And when we were picking the name of the number, you know, the number, <clears throat> I, Gary, Tom kept saying, what, we just gave him the numbers. Right. Wouldn't tell him what it spelled. Right. And Tom said, I have to know what it spells. Weeks. Weeks. And, uh, and then he had people, he hired a whole team just to figure out what it does. Uh, Come up with words. I don't think it was that emotional. <laughs> yeah, right. But Tom was like, I have to find out what this means. <laughs> so finally I said, look, okay, I have no problem telling Tom what it is. Tell Tom what it is. But of course, he will come up with, because he waited so long to find out, Tom he will figure out, Tom, didn't wait Tom will so figure out that there's out. something wrong with this number. Tom asked from the first day. Right. What it right. Stood for. right. And I didn't and want to tell you right. because I knew you would have this reaction. Because you have a knee jerk reaction to everything that's outrageous. No, I don't. Yeah. I said you do. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. And I know you. <laughs> you don't know yourself. You're not a good observer of yourself. You're not. You're really not. <laughs> so, you know, you react to stuff. You get crazy. You're like, oh, my God, it can't be. It can't be. Well, if I had that reaction to everything I did, I wouldn't have done anything my entire career. I'd still be sitting in Hartford. Excuse me. WRNW in Westchester, I'd still be sitting here. <laughs> this is where I would be. You know. I'm the genius of me, you and are. you are not the genius of you. I'm the genius of you. you. Right. So please, trust me, when I know, I knew that this would be your reaction. So when I got Gary's note yesterday in the movie, I go, I know it. Tom can't handle anything that's funny. You just got that note yesterday? Yeah. When did you come up with this? A week. At least a week. Gary, well, he didn't know how to break the news to you. Evidently. Like Early last week. Early last week. Yeah. About a week ago. Would you say that was a week ago? I said about oh, a week ago. <laughs> Tom, you can remember when you made that decision. Wow. How many decisions do you make a day, and yet you can remember that? I'll go back and check my calendar. <laughs> I'm so proud of that. Well, I, uh, I just want to say that I think that's an outrage. I'm being okay. serious. Okay. I think it's an outrage. I, think, I can't believe you're serious about this. I mean, I can't believe I'm being challenged on my 1-800 number. And it's a wonderful 1-800 number. And most of the ones that I wanted were not even cleared. This is one that was finally free. Yeah. So there you go. Okay. I guess we have a what they call a stand. Well, we don't have a standoff. You win. I mean, I can't. I can't release the number unless you uh, unless you uh, approve it. I can't it. get it hooked up. I'm, yeah, for some reason, I don't know why that is. I'm willing to go to arbitration. No, no. I mean, it, I don't oh, even no, care. No, no. Forget it. Just forget it. I give up. What am I going to do? I, I'm so tired you still of fighting. Win in arbitration because that means changing the number. Right. No, 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 no. No, he's saying he's willing to go to like maybe an impartial source. But then it would. What is arbitration? It means you have to give and then he gives. No, he's saying like maybe he could be wrong and maybe we'll we'll, we'll discuss you think it. He's saying this. Yeah. Maybe we'll. Yeah. At that's exactly of, what Tom said. One of the two of you understands English. Robin, let me handle this one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. No, I know what he means by arbitration. Arbitration. What you're saying is the classic definition. What Tom thinks arbitration means ah, is something I different. Else. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Arbitration usually means one side gives a little right, and the other right. side you don't. No, this but arbitration no, means no, no, either no, you're right no, or you're wrong. No, that's, that's mediation. Well, that's arbitration, too. 
Uh, you mediate in yeah. and arbitration. Ar listen, I know what you mean. Okay. <laughs> I looks like I don't know what you mean. I'd be happy to. All I right. know exactly what the words mean. Because I know <sighs> if we sit down rationally and think about this, this is just, of course you're reacting to it. That's what I want. I want people to react to it. I want people to love our 1-800 number or hate it. You know, but okay. let's have fun. All, right. All for that. So we'll ask someone who really matters. Are you <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe we can go to Uncle Melzi. Am I done being dumb? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Listen, I know you're smart. Right. I can't wait till I live. <laughs> you no, know, no, I know you're smart. He's a smart guy. What college did you go to again? Right. Puppy City? No, Tom, to the right. right. Puppy City. Tom, your, your office is to the right. Right. Thank you, Jackie. Tom gets so confused. Sometimes he forgets his office is to the right. He spun around. He spun around. <laughs> <laughs> you know Tom's grandfather, um, um, Abe Chiasano, yes. was the one who told um, Charlie Chaplin that the hobo thing won't fly. Because <laughs> people don't get it and it's offensive. People don't want to see hobos. Yeah. Yeah. Making fun people. of the downtrod. Yeah. So why do you want to... No one, it's depressing to see a hobo. <laughs> turn everybody off. Turn everybody off. It'll turn the big movie studios off. And yet, uh, Charlie Chaplin prevailed. He, he went ahead. Yes. <laughs> Abe Chisano. <laughs> and his great-great-grandfather, Vincento Chisano. <laughs> There's a famous story about him. <laughs> I'm trying to remember it. It's, uh, the whole family tree is quite amazing. Mm. Vincento Chiasano. He was there when they invented baseball. Yes. I forget the guy who invented baseball, some double-day guy or something. Uh -huh. and Vincento said to them, why not, um, in, I know you got a pitcher and a catcher. What if we put a guy between the two <laughs> and let him stand there? And, uh, of course, that would have ruined baseball. That's right. Because someone would have kept getting clobbered with the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Vincento Chiasano. Yeah. <laughs> and then his great, great, great grandfather, Giuseppe Chiasano, oh. was there at Lincoln. He was an advisor to Abe Lincoln. Really? He rose very high, very high in the Lincoln administration. Mm -hmm. And he said to Lincoln one night, he said, you know what you ought to do when you go to the theater? Wear your hat the whole time so people can see you clearly and help you in your campaign. Know right where you are. Yeah, know right where you are. And everyone else, there's Abe Lincoln. Isn't it amazing <laughs> yeah. that the Chiasamas have always yeah. been close to history? <laughs> Giuseppe Chiasama. <laughs> so Giuseppe, Vincento, and Abe Chiasano all had uh, big parts in the history of this country. That's true. Yeah. All of them had good ideas. <laughs> all right, let's take a break. We'll come back, and i got to tell you some more of what's going on right after this. More to come. So funny that I was talking about Tom, and uh, Gary comes running in and goes, You know, a listener just sent me a cassette with a song parody about Tom. You're kidding. No. Oh, uh, I was just, oh, oh, oh. just take a listen to it. Here you go. <laughs> so the uh, Partridge family thing. <laughs> Okay, he's got a whole thing going. I haven't heard the rest of it. Chiasano. <laughs> Seemed like he had everything in there. Yeah. Let's just see if it well, that's why he goes to church. He goes to pray because he's involved in our show. <laughs> he to wash himself clean. Yeah, I like that. That's an interesting theory. <laughs> but later on, though, when he comes home on Monday... <laughs> <laughs> this guy knows more about him than we do. Yeah, obviously. Baywatch with his son, Giussano. Oh, he watches Baywatch with his son. <laughs> <laughs> and plays with himself. stupid Guido, he's dumber than Steve Grillo. Someone tell me why this worthless show is sabotaging our show. I love it. <laughs> I have to listen to it. I haven't heard it yet. I'm uh, off to listen to the whole thing all the way through. 
For the record, I don't think Tom's a homo, though. I don't think he meant it mm. that way. It was just back to my office with some Playboy, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Good morning. You, you know what, you know what, honey? I've been all over this country doing radio, getting fired from radio stations. I don't have to listen to you. You don't know anything about radio. You don't know anything about what I'm up to. I'm, you're, you're a dumb bitch. Oh, oh somebody's going to play. What am I, a goddamn retard like Larry Flint? Yeah. Playing a judge? All right, goodbye. Yeah. Ugh, oh, what an annoying bitch. She's the woman you started calling names yesterday because she said mm. they could never make you handsome on Oh, show. please. <laughs> Here's what she... I mean, listen to that stupidity. She don't like what I say. If you don't like She's what I say... She's in love with you. Yeah. She's on the phone every morning. Yeah. Hi, Jack. Yeah, you're in a perfect mood to answer my question. Good. Um, I've always... I know you hate and dislike a great deal of people. I don't hate anybody. Oh. All you got it all wrong. Who do I hate? I don't hate anybody. Why, what gives you the impression I hate people? Uh, uh, start naming the people he hates. Or, I'm not going to name the people I hate. I don't hate anybody. No, I'm saying to this guy, start naming them. Yeah, who do I hate? Or dislike? Or, well, I don't dislike anybody. You don't dislike Iman? I hate Iman. <laughs> All right, there's one. Okay, I want to ask you uh, yes. the top five list in order of people that you hate or dislike most. Imus. He's all five. John Hayes. John Hayes. <laughs> Go ahead. Who else do I hate? Robin will tell you who I hate. She knows. But he doesn't hate anybody. And Tom Chiasano is three, four, and five. Tom <laughs> is such a dummy nitwit. My general manager is as dumb as a wall. He does more to piss me off in one minute than the other two guys combined. You got to hear this one. Ah, I don't even want to talk about it. Are you sure? It's this 1 800 it number. What is, we have a national 1 800 number for, now that we have all these markets. So this guy. Puts my teeth through the ringer. I decided I wanted a racy 1 800 number. Something exciting, something funny. Well, we just wanted something that was very easy to remember. Yeah, so now he got involved. This is the one decision this peckerhead gets involved in. Anytime he's involved, it turns into a nightmare. You can never get it done. I got to now go over his head. It's just, it's gone to the point where after the movie's done, I'm going to get him fired. It's going because I'm going to walk into management and I'm going to say, look, I love working here and everything, but it's either me or him. I can't take this stupidity anymore. Have you ever talked to Mel Carmazin about him? Yes. I've always felt bad that Tom's going to lose his job, but I don't feel bad anymore. I, so I, I got to get a 1-800 number. And, and I, I, I said, look, I, I came up with a 1-800 number that was funny. Tom comes to me, and, and by the way, I'm smart. I didn't tell him what the 1-800 number was. I just said, here's the number. And I gave him the number, like 432. Right. You know, I, I gave him the, 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 the digits. He goes, what does this spell? I said, I don't know. I just want these digits. He goes, no, it must spell something. You can't fool me. I'm no dope. Yeah, I'm no dope. I go, why? Well, you know, it's time. You're too smart for me. You're right. It does spell something. very something. childish. Right? Yeah, so it's, it's completely wrong. So, uh, so I said, okay, let me play it straight. Tom, here's what it spells. And I don't know what it spells. It doesn't like, you know douchebag or something. I don't know what it spelled. I don't know what it was. 1-800-U-DICK or something. Well, whatever. Whatever. I don't know what it was. I don't remember what it spelled. It was a 1-800 number. That's all I remember. So, he hated it. It's not right for us. No one will like it. The image of the show. I said, Tom, the reality check. The yeah, the sponsors. I go, Tom, reality check. Reality check. This is the Howard Stern show. Wait, you think a phone number is going to change the way sponsors, the public feels about me? Well, the number should... It's only for my show. It's during the course of this show. I don't want a boring phone number. I don't want anything boring. Yeah, no, can it... So, yeah, he walks in like this. Can't the number just be 1-800-44-STERN? So what he's doing now is he, so he, he, tr he thinks he's sneaky. He made the number 1-800-44-STERN. He says, keep that number until you get your real number. Meanwhile, every number I've given this creep, he's rejected. Yeah, he's he going to make you keep one. To the point now, you see this is the number I want to use? Yeah. It's completely innocuous. It's completely innocuous. And he won't do it? No, he, he just rejected. Gary comes in here and rejected it. So, Tom, don't bother coming in to talk to me anymore. I will talk with people above your head. You're insane. This is absurd. I can't, I can't say this on the radio? Come on, use your brain. Stop, you know, any time the guy gets involved, it takes years. 
And Gary went to him for five days and said, Tom, what about the phone number, the new one? He goes, I don't remember what it is. I'll have to go check. Yeah. Five days hoping yeah, we forget about him it. The run around. I mean, come on, man. What are you working? Well, go work for a goddamn nun. What are you working with me for? Go work for the church. That's what you really, that's your calling. You should shave your legs, cut off your schlong, and become a nun. <laughs> you nut. The guy's insane and everything he's involved in. He can't figure out the whole, the whole thing. Who does he think he's working with? Go change my image over a phone number. Guy's insane. I'm 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 completely sure he's got the same disease like I do. Pont has, who shot all those wrestlers. <laughs> I am sure of it. And he's not getting treatment. Right. I mean, it's 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 draining me already. He drains me. He drains me of my energies. Because you spend months on a phone. Yeah, on a phone, and he has no problem with it because nothing is urgent to him. He's like, "What's the rush on the number?" It's a rush. I don't want a boring number. Okay, it goes against my grain. Not only is it a rush. Yeah. All of these man hours put in cre into yeah. creating new phone oh, don't numbers. Ask. Every we have lists and lists, and then by the time I clear an eight hundred number, it's gone. It, these numbers go very we fast. We still have to do a show, Tom. Yeah. We can't just create phone numbers. Yeah, Tom's like, "We'll go back and create more." No, it's not going to happen. You're going to be fired. Trust me. I've got another general manager fired, and you're out the door, pal. I'm telling you, it's either me or him. I don't care, and I know he's gone. <laughs> this company needs me. I generate money. He don't generate nothing. There'd be more money coming in without him, probably. Uh, believe me, the day he's gone, there'll be more money. <laughs> we'll make Bucky the general manager. That guy can sell stuff. He doesn't care about anything. Bucky kisses my feet every day. He's like, Howard, thank you. I'm the top salesman. All I know is I got you here. I can sell. And I don't even know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a coma. Why doesn't Tom come into the, come into the studio? Because he knows I'm on fire. He's a coward. <laughs> right. He's a coward. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Would Larry work be on your list? Yes. Is Larry still up? I hate Larry. And I hate Scott Ein. I'm not Scott Einziger. I hate him too. No, I like Scott Einziger. I hate Scott Ginsburg. <laughs> all these Jewish names. Mm. My list is peppered with all ethnic groups and religions. I miss. No, first Tom Chiasano. He goes to the top. The top of the, of the list. list. More than I miss. Then I miss. And then Tom Chiasano again. <laughs> and Scott Ginsburg twice. And then Larry Wart. Still suing those idiots, and I will fist them on stage in Chicago. Trust me, How it's happening you? slowly but surely. How are you doing? We're doing, doing, we're doing fine. We already started going up in the key demos. That this is the way it usually goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll, it's just a matter of time. <clears throat> the man queer doesn't talk about me on the radio, so it's taking a little longer. But his show sucks so bad that uh, it will happen. Trust me. It keeps happening every month. We keep going up a little more, a little more, a little more. Just like in Los Angeles with the two douchebags, Mark and Brian. And just like the asswipe, Imus. <clears throat> you know, it's amazing. <clears throat> I was doing some research for the movie. Ivan called me the other day. He says, uh, tell me, he says, from the time that you left NBC and then the radio station in New York put you on in the morning, how long did it take you to beat Imus? So uh, I looked it up and I said, um... I called him back. I said, yeah, I gave him the dates. He goes, wait a second. You beat him in a month? Yes. I go, yes. All we had to do was go on. We just went on the air and we beat the guy. It was that easy. All his audience was gone. <laughs> he went down to a one. He goes, all right. <laughs> just check it. Just check it. <laughs> all right, I got to take a break. Thank you. Now, that is my saga. saga. What? You said you had a guy who could, who could reunite people. I have the perfect, reenact people. Uh, reun reunite oh, people. Oh, this investment yes. that we have. Yes. That's right. I have the perfect idea. Go ahead. Reunite Ralph with his biological father. Okay. <gasps> that would be great. Mm. Does Ralph know where his father is? I don't think he wants to know. He I doesn't... know that, but I think I don't think the guy's unfindable. He doesn't want to know his adopted father, and he doesn't want to know his biological father. He has an adopted father, too? Oh, yeah. Good Lord, with Ralph, he just can't hold on to a dad. Every man rejected him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> they leave in droves. Except that <laughs> priest. Right, he was right, willing to stick around. Ralph left him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got to go. All right, F. Tom Chiasano. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Can't stand Tom. He's on my S list. 
I mean, really, this guy's draining me. This, there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with this 1 800 number. I don't know. What, this guy suddenly became a nun. Forget what you. As soon as he's involved. That's why I said don't involve him in the 1 800 number. We wouldn't do the show if, if he had to be involved in every. And either that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move to Los Angeles and do the show from there. Good luck. Yeah. How are you going to do that? We have to be up at 2.30 <clears throat> in the morning every day. Yeah, but I don't have to look at Tom. So I can get up that early. I'd be motivated. You'd be sleeping at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't care. Howard. I don't care. <laughs> as long as I don't have to look at that robot. It's not a good number. Go back and create more. Okay, Tom, we'll sit and create. This is now over a year we're creating numbers. What am I, a machine? Have you ever seen the whole list? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Five pages. Yes. Yeah. We now have a five-page Lotus Notes list. We have a yellow pages full right. of numbers. Yeah. Every number you can think of. And then every time we get one approved, Tom goes, I don't like it. Uh, that doesn't ring a bell with me, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do your impression. I don't know. This is not appropriate. <laughs> not, not that one either. No. <laughs> uh, no, no. <laughs> at one point, he's not even looking at the page. No. He's at the ceiling, going, no. no, yeah, no yeah, I mean, he's so happy he has a little control, yeah. you know. It's just so re re he's annoying. Involved. He's involved. It's his involvement with the show. Everyone wants involvement with me because I'm a winner. He's involved. The rest. I'm on four hours a day. He's involved with the rest of the There's station. Plenty of stuff to do around They here. can't get a rating point. Plenty of stuff to do. His There's big thing was Grease Man. Brought him in. Four hours in a day. Grease Man. And you know what? He didn't get involved with the Grease Man. Yeah. You know who's funny? Grease Man. Yeah, Tom. Good call. Grease Man was smart. At least he went to Los Angeles and said, Tom, I'll do my show for you from here. You put him on at 10 o'clock at night, the guy couldn't pull a rating. There's nobody on at 10 o'clock at night in New York. He's funny. He's funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> the best story about that I've ever heard is he when, makes me laugh. when he had... Uh, Good call. I'm so Baba furious Bowie. with you. I'm telling you, it's either me or you. I can't oh, take you anymore. There he is. You couldn't take it, could you? No. Sit back there. No. <laughs> you can't no. take it. It's hard when people are when talking. When you know, yeah, you know, no, no, no. no. the grease man, the grease man comes charging in. I so, I, you you still think grease man's funny? Everything you, you want. Everything you want. Except the phone number. One little thing. I don't get everything I want, Tom. I've taken a lot of beatings this year. And I'm going to tell you something. Yeah, yes, that's right. You've taken a lot of beatings. That's here. right, creatively. Yeah. Let me tell you something. This phone number, I will go to the wall on this. You've now created a situation where you're going to have to now back it up and not, not allow it. It's ridiculous. Your decision is ridiculous. This is a fine phone number. Yes, is it a little racy? Yes, it's a little racy. We give this you. is the Howard Stern Show. Yeah. We give you. Don't give me anything. What do you give me? You give me a blank canvas, no, 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 and I create every morning. No, when you ask you don't give me any. When it comes to yeah. a lot of things, you don't cooperate. Don't, stop cooperating with me. <laughs> Just give me the one eight hundred number. Just, Tom, you rejected nine hundred, eight hundred numbers. Nine hundred. We got a list of minor one. I don't like this one. What, what is wrong with this one? I think it's. I, I think you said it's inappropriate. Yeah, all right. Well, so I say it's appropriate, I'll, I'll, and I'll, I will go I'll to the proper authorities, and I'm going to tell them. I'm going to say, look, I can't take it anymore. No problem. It's absurd, and we have to go over your head. It's embarrassing. Go. I will. Okay. I can't take it. You, you, every decision is a drain. Not every... No. Belong. The whole... Tom, Tom. Look at me, and I'm going to say I'm, it once. I'm looking All right, at you. Watch this. What? Square in the eye? Square in the eye. The whole show is inappropriate. <laughs> if it had been for guys like you, the show would never be on the air. That's not yeah, oh, think oh, about yeah, it, Tom. No, would no, you no. have had the balls to put me on... That's ten years I ago? I think I participated oh, in Oh, get out of here. No, decision. they did put us yeah. on ten years ago. Fifteen years 15 ago. Fifteen years ago. <laughs> Trust me. You're John Hayes in Wolf's clothing. 1985, <laughs> November. <laughs> Look at Fred. That's not a role model. <laughs> we're not, Nobody we're not... wants their child to grow up to be that. The whole show is inappropriate. <laughs> or anybody else on their show. The whole show. Oh, I hear that voice. The whole <laughs> show is inappropriate, <laughs> Tom. A 1-800 you number. People want Jackie for a son? <clears throat> oh, this is the least offensive thing I'm doing. This phone number. <laughs> But I don't ask your permission on everything I say. If I did that, I'd be bogged down in, I don't know, this isn't appropriate. Let don't talk about, about your it. wife. Don't talk about your, this. I need to sleep on it. Don't talk about this one. Don't talk about that one. Don't talk about O.J. Like Letterman, when I went on there. Don't, Letterman says to me, don't talk about O.J. It's inappropriate. Everyone's inappropriate. Have you ever Tom, heard me Tom, say something like that? You better damn well not. Let me tell you something. <laughs> yes, I have. I that means no. Look, this phone number is inappropriate. <laughs> It is not inappropriate over the boundaries of the show. It's inappropriate within the boundaries of this show. This 1-800 number. In fact, I hate this 1-800 number because it's so goddamn appropriate. <laughs> I can't even stand it. I should be much stronger than this. But I compromised on this one thing. I'm not compromising anymore. This is the compromise. That's it. 1-800. He goes, can't you have a number 1-800-44 Stern? Boy, is that exciting. Gee, well, the phones do ring, but I don't like the number. I don't like giving it out. It's boring. It's dull.
like certain people mm -hmm. on this planet. I won't mention names. <laughs> people who play golf for fun. Oh, right. All right. I wish you smoked some marijuana and lighten up. Yeah. I really do. You know, I don't think it would help. I wish you did crack. Yeah, maybe that. But I don't think crack marijuana could help him. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the, the whole show, die. the whole yes, show. Yes, uh oh, John? just stirring, John. Yes, John. Yeah. What? Since we moved to this building, yeah, phone calls have been down. Really? Yeah, you know, we used to get like thirty a morning. Right. And now we're getting like seven. Yeah. There you go. John, People hate the number. I swear to God. Ask are those ones ringing now? Seven? No. Yeah, yeah, look at them. Are no, they are down. He's right. They used to be lit for every one of them. Everybody used to love the number. <laughs> 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 no, seriously, Tom, I'm fighting you on this okay. one. And, and you know what? I don't even have the time to fight you. That's the problem. If you could just kind of... Do you understand that the whole show is inappropriate? That it's not a real appropriate program? I understand. You do. And you yeah. think that this number is not in keeping with the, the tone of the show? I, I what do you think will happen if we use this phone number? Do you think everyone will be Where's scared? Where's the phone number going to go that it shouldn't? Yeah. Where do you think it's going to be used? Well, I know where it's going to be used. Where? It's going to be used here. Right. On the show. Right. right. That's it. That's it. Then it's over with. Right. Do you think that's more... Do you think this is inappropriate compared to the other material I, I do? Obviously, I... You ever hear me talk about shaving? Yes. Oh. <clears throat> What? I, did, I do an hour on the vagina every day. This is the guy. This and guy how came women in. smell. Yeah, I, I did an hour on how women smell bad. <laughs> I mean, Tom. You should have heard the calls. I ah. bet. Of course. You don't put on a show like this and tell me this is inappropriate. This is not inappropriate. It's perfectly appropriate. You're making me cuckoo. I don't like this one. Can't you tone it down? Hey, Tom, no, if it was no, any more toned down, it would be. That's not going to go. It would be the morning zoo. <laughs> He wants a goofy number. What do you want for a number? Give me a number that you like. Tell me, tell me something that you think uh, is a little edgy. You know what? I will, I'll get back to you. All right. By the end of the show, come back with a number, okay? You pick the number. That's How's right. That? There you go. Let him do the number. Yeah. Jesus he thinks this saved. is a yeah, one eight hundred. Uh, yeah. Jesus right. saved. Yeah. Something like that. Thank you, Fred. Something about Jesus. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. This isn't the seven hundred club. I understand. It's the sixty nine club, okay? <laughs> <I'm ready so laughs> right. Really, you ought to become a nun. No. Grease man rules. Yeah, where's nun pest? Why don't you go put a nun? Why don't you put a dress on, okay? I mean, really, are you a man? You're so afraid. Yes, I am. Sister, yeah. Sister no, I'm not. He's one of the perfect I, I, examples, though, because he's out. always in the room, always in the back mm. office, looking at all the dirty again. magazines. Yeah. yeah. And then he wants to clean up everything. Yeah, right. He's, 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 uh, he's Larry Flynn. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Mr. Hustler. No, I saw that one. My friend. Do me a favor. Yes, sir. My friend. Go back and rethink this, because you're completely wrong. This is no more appropriate or inappropriate than anything we do on the show. It's, it's in fitting, it's in, in the perfect line with what we do on this show. That's all I'm saying. And you know it is. You're just busting balls because you're getting some input. Stop. Every time you have a decision to make, Tom, Tom, Tom because we've, we've already warded it down 900 times. He thinks that being a boss means saying no. Yeah. When he asks you do. question, you say no. Because you know Bologna. what's going to happen? Eat me. When he goes no. to the big guy and the big guy goes, what's with this phone number I'm hearing on the air? He'll go, oh, I approved it. He doesn't want to get in trouble. You're afraid of getting in trouble. Get in trouble. No, I'm not afraid of getting Come on, yes, you are. And there's times I go for advice. All right, you know what it is? You want to know something? You should have gone for advice on I this did. one. Oh, you did go for advice. Well, I'll go talk to the okay. powers then, okay? Of course you went for advice. And I'm sure you set it up perfectly. I don't want to approve this. Is I don't like this. Could you back me up? No. Yeah, okay. I'm sure. Who'd you call, the lawyer? That's another uh, dodo no head. We, we got a lawyer. Advantages. They got a that lawyer is, here. I, mean, I hope know, CBS gets that, a new lawyer. That lawyer has. He's been a dodo so head. Let him, yeah, he's done great. He he, the government's really, really backed good. off. He's done real good. Yeah, he's done great. One point seven million television. He, he, he too has kept us not knowing what we can do. You want to see a good lawyer? Let him pay the one point seven million. Yeah. Then we'll see if he's a good lawyer. Really That's good some guy. lawyer. His man took us around. Jesus. Hey, they're all terrific, these lawyers. They tell you how great they are. Great lawyer. 1.7 million dollars. He comes in and says, mm, 30% defensive. Never paid a fine. I hope he handles your divorce. <laughs> <laughs> you would let him do that? 1.7 million. Good luck. Yeah. Never paid a fine? I disagree. I think we did pay a fine. We never yeah. paid a fine. Technicality. They put that correct. We paid something. We paid something. That's all I know. <laughs> we made a contribution to the government. Yeah, yeah whatever you want to call it. the government was a charity. Uh, I'm sick to my stomach over that. That's some lawyer. I like lawyers who go behind and get to get a mob connection and can tell a couple of commissioners, listen, buddy, you straighten yourself out or you're out the window. A That's lawyer. a lawyer. That's the lawyers I would hire. You know why he's a great lawyer? He takes Tom's calls. He yeah. He's a great lawyer. He's a great lawyer. He tells us no to everything. No, he doesn't. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah.
Yeah. He and Tom love talking to each other. You two should go bang your heads against the wall. What he makes him good is he tries to find ways to say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I've, I've, I've seen all his yeses. Yeah. I can count them on one toe. Why don't you try finding ways to say yes? Yeah. Why don't you do the same as a lawyer if you yeah. admire him? Believe me, Yeah, I okay. <laughs> Believe me, I do. Your phone um, number? Please. One please. thing we did. Please. Yeah, oh, please. But how could the nine ones, you know what it is? have failed? Robin, if it was like anything on the show and all of a sudden, all of a sudden I could just call up the phone company like in the middle of the show and go, right. okay, here's the new 1-800 number. It would just it not even be an issue. It would not even be an issue. Right. As soon as you have to go to Tom for something, it's like... Well, why do you have to go to Tom? Because in this case, pay they pay the bill right. on but the they phone. They pay the bill for everything. I know. Why don't you guys fire me already? Do me a favor. How could you think I this is inappropriate you. I love you, and everything love else is appropriate that I do? man. Yeah. <laughs> you and the lawyer. Me and the lawyer talking over. You know, he's great. One point seven million. He's a great lawyer. If Tom, let me tell you something. If you had a case and you had to pay one point seven million of your personal money, would you be saying? Would you say he's a great lawyer? He's a great lawyer. Okay. <laughs> See, he would say, You're not going to change my opinion. Tom, about you go to a court case. Right. You personally. Yeah. All right. You've done nothing wrong. You've done nothing wrong. You, 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 you played within the guidelines of the Constitution of the United States. You did nothing wrong. Your lawyer comes back and says, listen, Tom, you owe $1.7 million. Would you say the guy's a great lawyer? I'd say if it, were the, <laughs> if it were the right business thing to do. Okay, great. Okay, good. Now, I only pray that you have to pay $1.7 million to somebody. <laughs> You'll be sitting there and you'll go, get me a new lawyer. I'll come see you for a lunch. You'll right. be wrapping a golf club around that lawyer's neck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tom would be out a window killing himself. Good. Everyone's a great lawyer. I haven't met a great lawyer yet. I'm leaving now. Go ahead. Perry Mason is a great lawyer on TV. Good work, Tom. Keep saying no to everything. I'll take care of it. I'll drain myself of more energy and, and meet with uh, a guy who makes sense in this company. There's only one guy who makes sense in this company. I hope CBS don't ruin him. He's the one smart guy here. But, you know, he's spending more and more time on the road lecturing. I know. He's well, such a brilliant man. He's the only smart one in the company. They and, got him all uh, over. We're stuck with Tom. I know. I can't be stuck with Tom. I'm going on the road and lecture. <laughs> Say, Tom, 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 Tom uh, was accused of murder. And as he's sitting in the electric chair, he goes, I'm an innocent man. Great lawyer. Great lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. I mean, seriously, did you guys see this number? This is innocuous. Yeah, I didn't see it. It's, it's, look at that. That's the one. He's, he's, he's the having one said the other day. In fact, I even said, I don't want this number. What's it mean? It doesn't mean anything. This no, this is something else. Oh, give me that. What, what are you saying? <laughs> <handed out? laughs> give me that. Jackie has to read it then. <laughs> Jackie, I gave you the wrong thing. Come here, give me that. Oh, no. Not here. <laughs> The one reason didn't approve it. Oh. Yeah, what'd you give him? <laughs> this is oh, come on. That one. Let me see, because I don't know what it is. Oh, great. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It could be for a mortician. Look at this. Exactly. Oh, please. <laughs> oh. That's great. Ow, ow. Give me that. Thank you. Thank you. All right? And you heard Robin's reaction. That's it's enough. Uh, that's, that's enough. Pretty innocent. That's pretty innocent. Time to say no. <laughs> if I keep saying no, I'll look like I'm doing something. I said there more yes. Yeah. Mm. I will be victorious. It's no time. <laughs> time keeps on. Time keeps on ticking, 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 ticking into ticking. the future. <laughs> Well, it seems like the past because it moves so slow for me. Andy, <laughs> Andy, you're on. Tom's a guy who has to go to two movies a week because he's so bored on the weekend. He has nothing to think about. A happy movie and a sad movie. <laughs> I like to pick one serious and one comedy. Sweet and it sour. Balances. <laughs> Yin and yang. <laughs> you know, and it, it, just imagine if it's during the summer he plays like six hours of golf and then he goes to a movie. Yeah, moment. tough day. If I feel sad, I program a happy movie. <laughs> and if I feel happy, sometimes I even watch a happier movie. Pick me up, bring me Thank down. God. Thank God musicals are back. <laughs> We're going to go see Evita. My left foot was very heavy. I have to go see a comedy. <laughs> Philosophy of movies. What, 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 what's the matter? You don't like it? Start making some good decisions. You won't get this. Yesterday we loved you. What's your problem? 
did see a musical this week. What'd you see? Ah, What'd you see, Vita? Everyone, everyone says I love you. Oh, oh good. Yeah, oh, the Woody good. Allen, you liked it? Yeah, it was good. I heard it was good. Yeah, it was very good. And then what else did you see? Well, did that pick you up? Or did I that bring you down? You were, you know, I didn't think you were going to be right, but you were right about Fierce Creatures. What is that? Fierce Animals, the... Uh, Fierce Creatures, the John Cleese. The John Cleese movie. Horrible, right? Yeah. yeah. You never should have revisited no, that. No, yeah. you're absolutely right. Oh, you went to see that? Yeah. Uh, did that make you sad or happy? A musical a and a comedy. A comedy. Well, well, the comedy to... wasn't fun. You must have had a bad week because you went to see the musical <laughs> and the comedy. <laughs> and I couldn't see my serious movie. <laughs> <laughs> did you see a serious movie at all? No, not this week. What? <laughs> <laughs> I would have been in a hole then. Tom gets a hold of Robin and goes, I'd like to see a serious <laughs> and a comedy. And gee, she's really upset. About it. I don't think it's to me. <laughs> Why don't you rent a war picture? Because you're at war with me. <laughs> Braveheart, I do. I have I'll to go watch Braveheart. <laughs> I'll be Howard and I'll be Mel Gibson. Yeah, I'll wear a skirt. Boy, movies are really important to you, aren't they? They are. You come in and you say, I didn't like them. No, you're wrong. Mm. He'll say you're wrong if you don't like a movie you right. like. Well, no, no you're wrong. Very passionate. Very passionate. You write about fierce creatures. Yes. It really wasn't good. Right. No, they, they should never have gone back. It, it was a fluke the first time. John Cleese, Jamie Lee Curtis, terrible. It's a miracle they made one funny movie. <laughs> that was see an actor. Ever see a group of white people that look less funny than John Cleese and Jamie Lee Curtis? And Kevin Klein. And Kevin Klein. Ooh, Kevin, and there's a Kevin party. Great. Now, he's a great he's actor. He's a great actor, but does he look funny? And no. John Cleese is great. All right. Yeah, and he made you really no, laugh. You're wrong. No, no. John Cleese John, is you're great. Wrong. John Cleese is 150 years old. <laughs> All right. Tom, thank you. I can see you drain me again. And Toy Story was very heavy. <laughs> You saw Toy Story, right, Tom? I didn't think I was going to like it. I did. But it was good. Yeah, his, his, his responses are so predictable. The potato was very funny. <laughs> Don Rickles played the potato. He had pathos. <laughs> the potato was funny. I felt for the potato. Don Rickles is underrated. <laughs> Don Rickles is a funny potato. <laughs> his eyes go off. I liked it when the character with the cowboy hat lost his way. <laughs> he had to get back. I liked Woody. <laughs> they should make a real Woody. Imagine being Tom's wife. Oh. I'd kill myself. Imagine the conversations after the movie. I liked it. Made me laugh. Penelope oh, made sure. me go to see Waiting to Exhale, but I liked it. <laughs> it's a woman's movie. I sing the Shoop Shoop song all day. <laughs> It's funny, it didn't fit into my grand scheme. I didn't know how to interpret it. It wasn't funny, and it wasn't sad. <laughs> it was bittersweet. <laughs> I was surprised. It was good. If I was married to Tom, I'd cut my own brake line. <laughs> I'd be like Princess Grace. I'd go right off the side. <laughs> You'd see me pumping the brakes as I go over the mountain. Just get rid of that blue. Imagine the conversation. It must be so minimal. It must be so trite. It must be so ridiculous. Oh, I enjoyed it. Oh, I like the movie. Let's go see another one. <laughs> Remember when they used to show double features? That would be too much input. <laughs> you know what I think is going to be good? What? <laughs> what? The new Brad Pitt movie. <laughs> <laughs> I heard he does an accent. <laughs> I heard he badmouthed his own movie, but then retracted it. That was very smart. I disagree. That makes bad business sense, but I'll see it anyway. <laughs> he must have a good lawyer. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think a good lawyer is one that costs you one point seven million <laughs> after five years. Oh. Be a bad lawyer. <laughs> yeah, a good you lawyer. Paid half a million. <laughs> we never paid a fine. <laughs> let us keep the company. <laughs> But they were nice. <laughs> they were nice rapists. Uh, Bob, you're on the air. Uh, Howard? Yeah. I think you should show some respect for Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Because yeah. he's your boss. You yeah. Know? yeah, right. I mean, you're... you're... <laughs> He's no longer my boss. I have no respect for him. Yeah, but I mean, you think you talk about how you're number one everywhere. Tom, what did you see the uh, what did you see on the movies this week? Anything good? What's coming up? That you the Woody Allen. That's it. Just 
fierce creatures. All fierce creatures. All right. Well, what is he looking forward to uh, seeing? He's, I know he's looking forward to my movie. Yes, but, but, but there must be something this weekend. That yeah, what about this weekend? What are you going to see? Microphone. What are you going to see this weekend? What's coming up? He's already got a plan. No, this may come as a shock to you, but I have no plan. Oh, he's lying. So what are you going to do? I know he's lying. I know he has a movie in mind. <laughs> I, I, do, I, am not, I do not lie. That I, movie I with Chris know. O'Donnell and Sandra Bullock. It doesn't do anything for me. Really? But you, but you want to see everything. Does Penelope want to see it? What if she drags you? We haven't talked about it. Really? <laughs> she might drag you to that one. I right. did not think... If I was Penelope, I'd be in the movies 24 hours a day <laughs> with Tom. If you, if you were married to me, you'd go to the movies. I would. Too. I would go all the time because I would, I would watch the movie <laughs> and look at Tom. I did not want to see Spitfire Grill. Oh, yeah. Indian. Good. Great American. Indian in the cupboard is, is on cable. <laughs> <laughs> the Indian looks real. That was a good movie. Yeah, that was good. Very good. Great movie. Yeah. gets a little... <laughs> have, How do they do that? He should have gotten an Oscar for getting so small. <laughs> he's a great actor. He he's must be a great lawyer, too. Maybe they should make a movie about a great small lawyer. <laughs> Tiny Mason. <laughs> I was with somebody who said great, great things about Fred in your movie yesterday. Yeah, he's terrific. He is. Yeah, he yeah, is. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you, wait, when are you seeing it? Um, Monday, I think. Monday? Fred is great. <laughs> then I will have to see a serious movie. <laughs> Fred's the new John Cleese. <laughs> they should put him in something else. <laughs> I want to see more Fred. I would like to see that cast in another yes. movie. <laughs> <laughs> may, may have Ray Park. Too. <laughs> All right, we should be laughing at Tom through face. Tom, leave the room so we All right, Bob, you think we should show Tom more respect? Howard, you know, you're Howard, you're like... You're great and everything, but right. imagine if all those people around you weren't there. And Tom's like the manager of the team, you know? Right. Yeah. And well, no offense, you've got it all wrong. <laughs> Tom Tom would much rather not even have us here. How long have you been number one, Howard? Uh, 10, 11 years, I don't know. Okay, and how long has Tom been there? 10, 11 years. Yeah, but we were number one before we got here. And we'd be number one if he left tomorrow. You wouldn't even know the difference. Yeah, but I mean, if Tom was... you got to be... I mean, credit the people who are responsible. We were number one while we were fighting with everybody at NBC. Right. Yeah, but, but the point is, for the last ten years, you've been number one, and Tom's been there. That's oh, yeah. Does that give was, him some credit? We were forced upon him. Tom would never hire us on his own. If Tom owned the radio station, he'd be the last guy to hire us. Trust me. Trust me, Bob. I don't know. I don't the, guy, know. the guy who told Tom to hire me is the guy you, you, you never did. Tom does. doesn't like problems. Does he let you talk to him like that? I mean, really? Has to. He does? Yeah. Can he do anything to you? No. He can't do anything. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? Fire me? I don't know. Who are they going to put the Shecky Shemstein uh, show on in the morning? Like, is he going to like, is he going to call you into his office after the show? And... On the cash count for this company, he can't do anything. So, like, Dude. even though he's technically your boss, he's, he's not. not a he's boss. not my boss. If I came, he's push... the boss of phone numbers. Right. If po if push... yeah, that's what he's the boss of. Getting a one eight hundred number. What we found that he controls. Well, Maybe he's like Scott the engineer. He's a guy that you know, he's just there. But well, why in fact, I shouldn't even to... insult Scott like that. Scott's it's got a talent. He can cut tape and make funny bits and stuff. I, I I don't know what Tom does. But why would anybody want to be general manager for like someone who's as big as you if they know they have no control over? He doesn't want to be. This is what we've been in. I was forced on him. You were forced on him. Yes. So he doesn't want to be there. Right. But he has. He, where's he going to go? You mean nobody else? Come on, will Tom. Come? Tom. Would you, uh, Tom? If you owned a radio station ten years ago, ten years ago, if you owned this radio station, but that's not true. Tom. I know you. I, years, you're a great guy. Don't get me wrong. Ten, ten years ago. Ten years ago, if you owned the radio over station. Over 11 years ago. No. The guy who owned the radio station was the one who had to put his balls on the line. Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. If you owned the radio station, you never would hire absolutely. me. Absolutely. Oh, okay. He absolutely would or he absolutely, absolutely would? wouldn't? I would have. I was a thousand percent. Really? Behind and in agreement. And you would have kept me on the air during all the FCC problems if you owned the radio station. They threatened that they were going to take away your license. You would have fired me in a minute. Uh, I, I, uh, hope I, I hope not. not. <laughs> I know you can't. No, because I mean, the guy I respect, you know, obviously really? made the right decision yeah. to keep you on, and I hopefully would have been smart enough to make to go along with that decision. Mm -hmm. I mean, Howard, you do have a point, but but <laughs> he is the general manager. You know, and I got to say something. Tom's afraid of a Tom. phone number. Tom is right. wearing a Howard Stern watch. Is he? Uh, All right. He must love him. All right, Tom. Tom, I'm not even comfortable making fun of you. I like you personally. It's just some of your decisions are wacky. You drain me with these one eight hundred numbers. Right. I'll take care of it. I'll leave you out of it. You should 
be drinking. They're getting already taxed. I see what's going on. Yeah. All right. Steam coming out of your head. <laughs> All right. Let's leave. We got commercials. We're way behind already. Way behind. Way behind. That's... He's looking at his Howard Stern. Howard. <laughs> 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 what? Howard, why don't you let the why don't you let um like your listeners vote on some of? No, it, it, it's really none of your business. Tom doesn't want to share right. his decision making with you. Yeah, that'll that'll confuse him even more. <laughs> All right. I can, I can imagine what some of them may be. All right. Thank you, Bob. Bob uh, your point you. well taken. You are a great American, Bob. Right. <laughs> but you're really misguided. Thank you. Okay, Howard. Right. You're giving Tom way too much credit for the show. <laughs> I don't take any credit for the show. But I'm, I'm saying he was giving you some credit. What? Nick, you're on the air. What is it? Quickly, I must break. Tom is unreal. He should just read the read private parts, and then you should just figure out that you've done it. You figured it all out. Right. Very good. Have a good day. Thank you. I'll be curious to see what you think of the movie afterwards. Do you see yourself as a uh, one of these kind of general... Who will he identify Who will you identify most with in the movie? Yeah. That's what I'm... I'll be very okay. torn. <laughs> he will be torn? I'll be very emotionally torn. <laughs> On one hand, I understand the business side, but I do understand the creative vibe. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a confusing movie for you. I don't know if it's going to fall into the happy category or sad. I will be Jekyll and Hyde-like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom, thank you. I'm going to take a break now. Let's stop the Tom bashing for, for a few minutes. Right. Yeah, we'll take some breaks. <laughs> 45 minute Tom bashing. We'll take a break. And then we'll come back to bashing. Then we'll bash Tom some more. <laughs> right after these words. <laughs> Tom is wearing me down now. <clears throat> Imagine, i got to go now to the president of this company, who is so busy with to 79 radio stations, stupid to ask a stupid question. And I, you know what? I, I gave Tom the list of all these phone numbers I want for the 1-800 number. He approved all the numbers. You know, he said, I said, do you have a problem with these? Can we go out and try and find out? Oh, these are okay. And then, and then when he, we finally get it, he goes, no, it's not okay. I'm confused. I'm drained from this stupidity. I'm like treated like a child by this guy. I'm sick of it. I'm really worked up over this. I, I have to now embarrassingly go to the head of the company and discuss this with him. Like, I, like, I, I don't even want to bother the guy with this. This is stupid. If the head of the company is listening, could you just step in, please? So we don't even have to... Uh, it's too so embarrassing to bring this up to you. You know what I'm saying? Huh. Oh, and this is good. I got the girl on the uh, phone. 